Welcome to the short lecture on introduction to linear discriminant functions. So let us start with some definitions. The first one is of course patterns. So what are pa these patterns that we are trying to understand in the field of pattern recognition? The patterns are basically the regularities that are seen in the real world that we are that our brains easily recognize. For example, uh, we can always recognize people, their faces, uh, fruits, vegetables. Uh, we and we can all, and doc and some specialized people can easily recognize diseases and with some more training we can recognize more difficult patterns. So the the goal of the field pattern recognition is to automatically recognize or categorize these patterns. So the next definition is sample. What are these samples? Samples are basically feature vectors. These are the these are the vectors or these are the numbers sometimes and sometimes these are just words that represent or characterize the patterns or regularities. So some of ex some examples of these features or samples include statistical features, shape features, colors and also some advanced derived features. So examples of statistical features include the first and second moments of a PDF that is the mean and variance. Shape features include the length and breadth of an object such a, and also some sometimes the major axis and minor axis of a irregular object and the ratios of these axes and also some other uh, shape features. And of course colors can be red, green, blue and so on. For example, you can always recognize the uh, fruit apple by its color red and uh, you can also recognize the fruit orange from its color. So, so, uh, so the colors are the most discriminative features for fruits. Or in other words, colors are the features that discriminate the different types of fruits. So the next definition is the concept of category or categories and classes. Which basically sometimes categories are also called classes, uh, groups and so on. These are basically similar, I mean, these are basically the groups of similar regularities or similar patterns. For example, human beings can be grouped into men and women, male, female and so on, or male and female. And, uh, and in the, similarly in the case of apples, I mean, the, similarly in the case of fruits, uh, the two popular groups are apples and oranges. And similarly, uh, we can have multiple classes or groups in vegetables, multiple class and also other types of objects. One type of categories or one type of classes that are very important uh, in uh, in terms of application of pattern recognition in biomedical fields is uh, uh, what is the result of a medical test. So is, it, is the patient testing positive or negative? That is a very important category or class that, that is studied in the field of biomedical image processing using machine pattern recognition. So the next definition is the target variable or target vectors in the case of multiple classes. So these are usually uh, simply in the case of binary classification the target vector or target variable is just either 0 or 1 or minus 1 or plus 1. And in the case of multiple classes uh, this target vector is represented as a uh, basically a set of consisting of zeros and ones where ones indicate the class number. And this table shows a typical feature table where, where the, for example, for two part kinds of persons, uh, their heights are six feet and five feet, and their weights are 170 and 150 pounds respectively. So these are the features, and those are, and these are their features, and these are their categories or classes. So now coming to the f main topic of this lecture, the linear discriminant functions. Now coming to the main part of this short lecture that is the linear discriminant functions which are usually represented by the symbol or the label g of x where x is the sample vector. So this uh, a linear discriminant function usually have a structure shown here which basically has two components. The first one is the product of the weight vector with the feature vector and the second component is the bias. So the weight vector is basically the set of weights that we multiply the features. Multiply the features with and add them. Basically we are linearly combining the features with this weight vector. And the second part is the bias which determines the position of the decision function or the discriminant function from the origin. We will see about it in the next slide. So basically for a binary classifier we have this discriminant function g of x 
um, which can be used as a decision function. If the g of x is greater than 0, we can classify the sample into class 1 and otherwise into class 2. Basically, this classifier or the discriminant function acts like a boundary or acts like a boundary where we plug in the sample vector or the feature vector and see its sign. If the sign is positive, we, we categorize this vector into a class 1, otherwise into class 2. And these two uh, these two graphs or uh, these two plots show or illustrate the concept of linear discriminant functions. The first one, the first the, the first graph or the first image shows the typical uh, typical linear discriminant function g of x. See if the values are positive I mean, when you when you plug in the values from which class one you get a positive value. Uh, hence you classify those values uh, into class region one. Uh, and when you plug in this these features the values from this region you get a negative value. And similarly the bias uh, the values of bias and weight vector are shown here. So the bias basically determines the distance between the origin and the decision function. It can be easily determined by a equating this value w transpose x plus w naught equal to 0 and calculating the value of the distance which is defined as which is defined as the product w transpose x divided by the norm of w. So hence the distance is w naught divided by this norm of w. This is basically the perpendicular distance between the decision function and the origin. Now moving to uh, linear discriminant linear discrimination of uh, multiple class into multiple classes there are three types of uh, discriminant function there are three types of discriminant functions the first one is one versus rest one versus others discriminant function where you use k minus 1 binary discriminant functions each k each uh, discriminant function basically divides the region into uh, class ck or not class ck that is basically if you see if a, if a vector is plugged into this discriminant function g of x, you get, if you get a positive value, you classify it as c1 and a negative value, you classify it as not c1. And similarly, you use the other binary function. So, this type of classification results in a major problem because you can have this region where you cannot say that this uh, sample vector belongs to either c1 or c2. You can clearly see that it can belong to both C1 and C2. Hence, this is an, this is an ambiguous region. Basically, the samples in this, this region cannot be classified accurately. The next type of classifier is 1 versus 1 discriminants. In this type of classification, we use k into k minus 1 by 2. That is the sum of the, the, sum of the classes. Uh, the number of, uh, the, basically, the number of discriminant functions equal to the sum of the classes. That is 1 plus 2 plus k which is basically k into k minus 1 by 2. So, we use this, this many binary discriminants to classify each sample or each, uh, at each sample whether it is class 1 or uh, some other class. For example, this discriminant, this linear discriminant uh, basically separates this part of the region into C1 and C3 and this one C2, C3 and this one C1, C2. But there is a possibility of having a small region which cannot be classified into any of the individual classes. And these problems arise because uh, the, uh, all these class discriminant functions are binary discriminant functions. They do not uh, care about the third class at any given moment. So, uh, so the good solution for this problem is to use a k class discriminant function, basically which decides, which simultaneously or which decides the exact class of a sample vector in when given k possibilities. Discriminant function basically has k linear models in which we which actually separates the region or divides the region into three or k separate k separate classified regions or k separate categories. There is no uncategorized or ambiguous region. The k class discriminant function works because of its decision rule. Because the this discriminator chooses or uh, categorize a sample x into class ck if its discriminant gk of x is greater than all the other discriminants which are not equal to k. So, that is it simultaneously considers all the k classes and determines the 
optimal class the class that has the maximum discriminant has the maximum value for the corresponding discriminant function okay now let's look at some of the methods that are used for designing this linear classifiers or linear discriminants so now we know that the target vector is given by the vector t the tar and the input samples by x and we want to find the weight vector w that is the one that actually uh, can be used to build the linear discriminant function so in the case uh, now for the first thing the first method we will look at look, the first method we will look into is the least squares method so in this least square solution uh, we basically use the linear algebra approach that is we uh, since we are trying to find uh, the weight vectors for k classes as i already discussed in the classification method where we have k linear discriminants for the k class problem so we have k vectors or k w vectors for the k class so now we group or stack all these w vectors into one big matrix w and we try to find the matrix that actually minimizes the least squares error that is the uh, error between the target vector and the samples on the trans on the linearly linearly translated samples or in other words or in other words basically you want to minimize the difference between the transform that is w transpose x plus w not and the actual target values so we want to find those values that minimize the difference between uh, this function the values from this function and the actual target values so that is how we use the least squares uh, solution that is we minimize the uh, mean square error between the, the that is why that is we minimize the mean square error the solution is basically given by the uh, the trans the pseudo inverse of the data matrix x multiplied by the target vector t which is very familiar result used in linear regression so basically the linear classification using least squares has same mathematical structure as the linear regression except the target vector is a category i mean it only represents categories rather than real values for a, for example in a binary classification it, i mean it has only minus 1 and plus 1 and some of the comments on least squares method are it has a always has a closed form um, it usually has a closed form solution and it is uh, very sensitive and the problem the main problem is it is sensitive or very sensitive to outliers that is it is not a robust approach and another major problem is uh, the error or the uncertainty is assumed to be of a, assumed to be following the normal law, normal law that is gaussian distribution so in this plots you can see that the least square solution gives a very good result when the data points uh, from class 1 and class 2 follow the normal distribution that is you see here that class 1 is represented by red crosses and class 2 represented by green cross green circles and the classifier that is the delinear discriminant the blue line is the least square solution and it looks rather it looks like a rather good solution but in the case when we have the second case when we have outliers in the class 2 though these data points look different from the main points in the data class 2 they actually also belong to the class 2 but because of these uh, uh, so called outliers the classifier actually is not very robust that is we can see clearly that some of the green values or green circles are on the wrong side of the discriminant function now let us look at the uh, second method for finding the second method the second method for finding the uh, linear classifier or linear discriminant solution uh, the main idea in Fisher, in the Fisher discriminant approach is Fisher linear discriminant analysis approach is that you project the sample vector onto a smaller dimensional space, usually one dimensional space, using a weight vector that minimizes the a certain criterion. The criterion is class separation. That is, you want to minimize the. I mean, you know, the criterion is that you want to find the values uh, based on certain criterion. The criterion is maximization of class separation, and it is defined as the ratio of between class variance to the within class variance that is you want to maximize the variance between the classes and minimize the variance within the class I mean, at least the ratio of these two quantities the solution is given as uh, proportional to the sw inverse that is and multiplied by the mean difference sw represents the within class variance i'm sorry it represents the sw represents the within class variance and m2 minus m1 represent the between class variance or it is um, the between class variance is defined by the difference m2 minus m1 the, I mean, it is a basically a function of m2 minus m1 so the fisher discriminant 
the the projector matrix the projection matrix is basically proportional to this product so y is not exactly a discriminant function it's actually a scalar value now we use uh, we now we have the next problem is to find the uh, threshold value on to which the y can be compared and, and so that it can be used to determine the uh, pr the class probability of a new vector that is a new sample vector that is not already classified so in this plots in these plots you can see that fisher discriminant analysis actually works uh, better in both uh, conditions that is when you have only gaussian distributed data samples and also when you have some outliers in the one of the classes see the number of uh, blue green circles that actually are on the wrong side of the disc discriminant function are far fewer or far less 